John White reporting for the Lake Simcoe Message Board and I'm currently on the second line of Oro which is Shanty Bay and as you can see the warm weather, wet conditions have uh, broken up the ice here at Shanty Bay now and uh, it looks like we had a pretty good start to it by the look of the ice out there it looks to be about uh, six inches thick but it is broken away from the shoreline now. Across. There are a couple of huts on the other side over there, but uh, I don't know how long they're going to be out there even. This wind coming out of the southeast is uh, breaking up the ice at at least the mouth of Campenfeld Bay and maybe beyond, but we'll go up the uh, lines and take a look from there. But uh, it looks like access here at Shanty Bay is going to be limited until we get another freeze. I'm now at the uh, fourth line of Oro, looking out through the trees here, of course. Um, down at the shoreline here, it's uh, broken up and difficult to get on. And looking at the big bay point there, it's difficult to tell whether it's actually open water or if it's just water on top of the ice. But um, with this wind and the ice breaking up out there, I can't expect it's going to be very good ice anyway, and I would stay the hell off of it. I'm now at the end of the sixth line of Oro, and now it really starts to get messy. The shoreline here is breaking away, and again, it's difficult to tell whether there's actually ice under that water or not. But anyway, you can see now where there's a big crack here where it's starting to break up, right across from Big Bay, Big Bay Point. And it's looking more like you can launch a boat than a skidoo. I'm now at the seventh line and things aren't getting any better. We now have a river at the end of it here. Surprisingly, the ice that is on the shore here is a lot thicker than I thought it might be. Somewhere out there, about 300 yards, there's a test hole to be done. I'm not doing it. But um, with this wind coming right out of the south like that, the only caveat is that we could end up with all of the ice from Innisfil, and then if we get a freeze, at least we'll have ice at this end of the lake. But um, no trout fishing very soon off the seventh line. I'm now at the ninth line of Morro. And as you can see, they got the new don't dump your bait signs up here. Looking out on the lake, it's uh, no better than it was at the seventh line, that's for sure. And if anything, there's another river of tears for the uh, whitey anglers. I'm now at Carthew Bay, and you can see there's a hut out there. Uh, they do get ice fairly early in here because it's somewhat protected, but it's also a very dangerous place to be because um, a lot of sleds have gone through here out near the shoal past that, uh, to the right of that point there. Um, it's very tricky ice in here. Uh, it tends to capture all of the west wind waters that come in here, push it in, break it up, and so it can be very volatile. But for now, you can see that there's been some traffic on here, and there's a reasonable amount of ice. It might be an alternative for perch fishing. Well, I'm now in Aurelia at the uh, bottom of West Street, uh, looking out over the lake, and the ice is a little more established up here. There's actually pretty good ice in Shingles Bay, and looping around here behind Victoria Point, you can see a hut out there. But um, back in the bay here, where it gets deep in the 16 to 18 foot range, there's actually some pretty good perch fishing. And if we get one cold night, um, it's not a bad alternative to Coach Chain. Although I don't see any tracks out there, so obviously there's nobody even out to test it yet. Anyway, that concludes my cheerful report for January the 24th. And remember, it is only the 24th, and a couple of uh, really cold nights can firm up some ice out there, and lots of time left before the season closes.